you so much for joining me for a daily Black with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Baptista. You know what I like to do on my show. I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you to become your best self. The scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And today we want to get you fired up about restarting, about hitting the reset button, about, you know, there's some things that may have gone on in your life that you are just starting to get over the hurdle. The obstacle was there and you are closer to victory. Well, let's celebrate those things in our lives, and that's what we want to touch on today. My guest is author Susan Sirico, and she has written the book, Rainbows Over Ruins. I love that title. So you know what I'm going to say. Go on. Get comfy. Get cozy. Get your coffee or get your tea, because we are about to get started. Good morning, Susan. Thank you so much for being on with me today. Good morning. I'm I'm delighted to be here. I love the title of your book, Rainbows Over Ruins. So I have to ask you, why did you choose such a title? I basically chose the title because I I really believe that what came what's important in life is to choose a more positive approach, especially when you're going through hard times and have bad things happen. So we had a landslide that destroyed our home. That's the ruins part of it. And every everything else that happened after that, as we went through the experience of rebuilding and getting resettled, uh, was really part of building a seeing a beautiful rainbow in our lives, hence rainbows over ruins. And it was even made more wonderful when we found a, a picture online that was exactly that, a, a beautiful rainbow over a broken down barn in the middle of a field. So it was just the perfect combination. Mm -hmm. I love it. Now, so many times when a guest comes on, I ask people, or I'm sorry, I I read off their bio and, you know, it's the, the, the usual type of wonderful guest that I have on. But I want to ask you uh, a before and a after. So before there was the landslide, who would you say you were, and then after the landslide, who do you say that you are now? Hmm. Before the landslide, I was a, um, I'm sort of an, an average production manager in television and film. Uh, I was, I, I led sort of a double life, actually, because not only did I work in entertainment, but I was also deeply involved in spiritual training and, um, I was joined, uh, I became a, uh, an ordained deacon in the Gnostic tradition and I studied a great many different spiritual topics over the years so that I, I, but I didn't talk about that at work. It wasn't part of who I was. Um, it was really quite separate. After the landslide, um, it's a profound experience to go through a major disaster. Uh, you know, you are, your your world literally falls down around you. It comes tumbling down around you when you have a landslide. And so you have to go through a huge spiritual healing. And and I call it, you know, you are profoundly affected physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And so you have to put all those pieces back together and redefine yourself. And that became my journey for quite some time. Uh, I I was motivated to go and study coaching because I didn't understand uh, what it was. Why why were we able to rebuild our lives when so many people aren't? And I developed, in the course of that training and whatnot, I was able to to find a very profound spiritual connection. And that led to not only being a, you know, a, a, a coach, but also inspired me to write the story, which became Rainbows Over Ruins. Today, I am still in television production for the most part. I'm uh, an executive in charge of production for a daily television uh, program that airs on Hallmark Channel. And we work, we work our tails off you know, for two hours of original content, five days a week, 50 weeks a year. It's a very intense schedule. 
uh, but we are good quality content, which makes it, you know, a big difference to me at this point. And I am also, you know, doing you know, speeches and I've written courses and I've done podcasts all about this this process of overcoming what happens when you have a disaster on major adversity mm-hmm. or setbacks. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I like that you said is that this is a journey. And I think that anyone who has been through something major, uh, be it that it was uh, inspirational or traumatic, I think they're nodding their heads saying, yes, the big things really are a journey. Now, for someone who perhaps they haven't had a journey in their lives yet and they're not familiar with this process. Um, how does something traumatic, how does something as d- disastrous as a landslide that destroys your home, how does that turn into a spiritual journey? It takes time <laughs> and a certain amount of willingness mm-hmm. to go through it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what I what I found is that you just have to learn a number of things along the way. Um, part of that is you have to release the past because it's not there as it was before. Um, you're going to become something else. You don't know what it is yet, but you you have been put in that position of having to make changes you weren't anticipating. There's a wonderful book out by Uma Girish. It's called Finding Ama, and it's about she lost her mother and. It caused a profound change. You may not think of that as a disaster, but the emotional loss is, it, it crosses a number of different negative things, experiences that we may have. But basically, when your physical world, you're just, you're, it's disrupted, um, but there's a flip side to that, which is you now have an opportunity to recreate it and even improve upon it. Your emotions are all over the place. Uh, you go into shock. You don't know what you're doing. You have feel. You alternate between feelings of despair and terror and anger, anger and intense grief. And so, and every once in a while, a flash of something wonderful happens in your life. But basically, you're in in a terrible emotional mess. So, part of the spiritual journey is learning how to manage your emotions, how to see the little perceptual shifts you can make, so that you are better and and. You can use serenity prayers. I mean, there are a number of ways that you can start to make that emotional shift. You've got a battle going on in your mind. Um, right. You're overwhelmed by everything. And so you have part of the journey is learning how to hear that negative thought weaving its way into your thought mind and, and look at any limiting beliefs you have or discover the power of positive self-talk. Now, from a very Christian perspective, that negative feeling you're feeling is can be the enemy speaking within you. And and so you really do need to wrestle with that. It is a battlefield and and an intense one after you've had this kind of a, a disaster. But you do get through it. You do stabilize. And then you start to move forward again. And and that's that's part of the journey as well, to figure out where are you going to um you know, where are you going to put yourself? What are you going to, to do now? How are you going to explore life? What, what helps you cope? You, you find you need new coping mechanisms, uh, to help you handle it. So that's the journey that you go through. Finding these until you finally uh, reach a point where, you know, uh, uh, you reach a point where you're able to, um, I guess, reframe your life and see the vision of what it is you want to do now, who you are becoming, and go for it. So that's the arc of the entire experience. Right. So when it comes to the actual process of healing, someone Mm -hmm. may be saying, well, you know, I I, I used uh, Reiki, or I used massage therapy, or I decided that I wanted to get in contact with nature more, was there a particular modality that assisted you or you found was most effective for you as far as healing was concerned while you were on your journey? Yes, <laughs> I did. Um, and they started quite early. I, I've always been someone, um, 
to take spiritual material with me. So literally, as I'm running out of my house with my what belongings I feel I can take at that moment, I had a copy of Wayne Dyer's book, There is a Spiritual Solution to Every Problem, uh, or solution, you know, Spiritual Solution to Every Problem. And I was, that was my inspirational reading during the first few weeks. Um, I also, we got some stress-related injuries and went to a chiropractor. Uh, who who was helping us, and I had the chance to do neuroemotional work with him. It's sort of like kinesiology, and it was it was fabulous. It helped me get in touch with some things that go way into my early years that I didn't even realize were still impacting me and and having a, a negative uh, trigger for things. Um, I was I had always been very active in the church. I was a deacon. And so I really threw myself into church activities. Uh, one of the members there helped me see the value of having a routine, uh, a routine that helps you avoid depression and having to take medication for depression. So that was, that, that was an amazingly simple little thing of having like a checklist every day to go through. Did I get my, my eight to nine hours of sleep? Did I feed myself as if I was feeding company? Um, did I do some exercise? Did I learn something new? Did I talk to somebody um, about, you know, what was happening to me? A confidant? Uh, was mm-hmm. I? Was there were there were just so, these little things? Being in beauty and meditating, or being in prayer, was a big factor because you're getting in touch with the spiritual side. And then I ultimately added being of service because I felt there was a profound, profound way to um, get out of that the feelings of yourself. It's so you know, focus you as, when you're in crisis and, and move it towards somebody else. Uh, I also did retreats. I learned centered prayer. That was very powerful. Uh, it was a different approach to prayer than I was used to. And I, uh, and I also found another uh, technique way down the road called affirmations, which are positive why questions. And they also made a huge effect. Yes, you know, it is, it is so refreshing when you know yourself enough to know what you need uh, in a particular time, but to yet be open-minded enough to understand that the journey is just that, and uh, some new doors may be opened to you, and to be able to just sit with yourself and allow God to just minister to your heart and to yes. your spirit in that moment. I, I love that. Well, it is almost time for us to go to break. But before we do, Susan, if you could remind everyone, please, what is the title of your book, where can we get a copy, and how do we follow you online? Well, my book is called Rainbows Over Ruins. It's available on Amazon and Balboa Press. Uh, It is a, uh, I am, uh, also, you can follow me at uh, my website, which is www. SusanSharaco.com, and I'll spell that. It's S-U-S-A-N-S-H-E-R-A-Y-K-O.com. Uh, if you'd like to uh, keep up to, to date in what I'm doing when I send out messages, um, please accept a gift I offer, which is a survivor's guide, uh, and it's 12 Tips to Gain Inner Peace. And it's available as a gift from Susan, www.giftfromsusan.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Put in my name. You can find a variety of different ways. Gotcha. Alrighty, listeners, now you know where you can pick up a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. Anne, Camilla, William and Fred. The four in the Humvee are on a perilous journey, halfway across the country, to a tent city near the Mississippi River, a long ways from Boston. Through each bend and turn, they meet some people in need, and others who have evil in their souls. Four unlikely heroes in a Humvee, on an unlikely trip. The recipe for a captivating story. Grab this book, EMP Casualty, by Michael Kravitz. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. 
I am your host, Dr. Angela Beth Chester. I am speaking with Susan Shireko today, and she has written the book, Rainbows Over Ruins. I know, such an intriguing title. Unfortunately, she did have a tragedy of a landslide that destroyed her home, but her rainbows are still there, and I love how she is able to talk about the awesome things that God continues to do in her life. Well, Susan, thank you so much for not only being on the show today, but but sharing the ways in which you have been able to turn uh, tragedy into victory and to inspire others with all that you share. So my next question for you is, uh, once you found your new home, um, how did the the healing process go then? How did your journey continue? Did you feel as though, phew, it's over. Now we can settle in and life goes on? Or did you find that the process of healing was still taking place? The process of healing was definitely still taking place. I, I was confused because... I didn't think there was anything special about me that enabled me to get through this and move from being people without a home who were, um, you know, in a rental, uh, from there to what turned out to be a, a beautiful home. And why did we make it and other people did not? And I really began a search to figure that out. Um, it was, so I began to study and one of the first things I did, um, was to, I used to joke that when I retired someday in the distant future, I wanted to run a retreat center. And where we had our new home, I thought maybe that would be the place. We were on a, a new ranch. It was beautiful. It overlooked a lovely valley. We couldn't have asked for a more beautiful place uh, to take our lives up again. Uh, but but that just that it turned out it wasn't the right place. But I did want to find myself studying coaching, and there I I chose to study with Sharon Wilson who, on the topic of empowered spiritual life coaches. Uh, from there, I, I spent a year with her, and then I was still very interested in this process, and I began to study with Bob Proctor and became one of his life success consultants. And then I did it to Ted McGrath and a little Laura Langemeyer, and I, I still hadn't turned that into a, a business as such. So that I, I was really kind of confused by what was going on. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe I just don't know how to sell anything. So I chose to, um, to take up a multi-level marketing program. And I learned a lot, but it, it, that was not the answer either. And so I, I started to write and explore other avenues. What was I going to do? Did I want to stay in production? It was a heavy, heavy questioning period in my life about what was my goal. Um, and I, you know, at certain points I really was in despair. I thought I, you know, I was, I was really not going to make it through this after all. I wasn't learning how to make, be successful in life. And I, I asked, I told a friend of mine, I said, you know, I wish I could just hear voices that would tell me what it is I could do. And, and ironically, within a couple of hours, I was listening to a radio program, sort of like this, where uh, Noah St. John was speaking. Uh, Noah is the uh, creator of Affirmation. These are the positive why questions that I mentioned earlier. And for me, they turned out to be a huge missing piece of the puzzle because for the first time, I was learning how to access the inner reaches of my mind and my subconscious mind, or non-conscious mind as some people call it, that goes out into space and, and in very Christian terms, makes contact with the Holy Spirit. Uh, some people call it the higher self, but it is a it is a very spiritual essence to be out with and to ask questions and to look for guidance and help. And so I learned how to do that through affirmation because it's just a question. You throw questions out into the universe and the answers come back. And that was a profound experience. Within a very short period of time, I began to see little teeny weeny indications that something was changing, that my life was moving again. Um, wasn't long after that that I got an offer for a new job, the show that I'm currently on, but it was only supposed to last a couple of months. 
and I didn't even want to take it. I was done with everything. I was, it was just, I was totally in despair about things. Well, as it turned out, I did take that. It was a profound, a profound opportunity, one of the best jobs of my life. Now we've been nominated for three Daytime Emmy Awards. This past season, we won a Greasy Award, which is an award for women in the entertainment industry. And I also have had in incredible experiences in crisis management that I never would have had if I had not been here. So that's enabled me to write my book, and went to blog and to do the podcast, um, even do blog talk radio. I do speak online on, like, as, like this, and I wrote a course. I mean, all of this came out of this period of growth that I was going to. And all that time, I was mm-hmm. coming from a place of survival and recovery. So it, mm-hmm. it was just a continual process. Right. So for anyone who has picked up a copy of your book, before they get started, um, or perhaps they're halfway through, but you want to make sure that they get the nuggets of wisdom that you have placed in the book. What is maybe one or two bits of wisdom or a message that you want to make sure that the reader picks up on? I think I would say, first of all, that I'd like you to come away saying, if she can do it, I can do it. Because it is a, I, I'm just an example of someone who's gotten over a profound negative experience in order to embrace a new and more prosperous life. And that's, it is, it's, it's not brain surgery. It is a, it is a practice, disciplined approach, um, that is often spiritual, certainly one of faith and belief. Um, I want them to know that regardless of the circumstances you find yourself in, you can survive. You can rebuild and ultimately create a vision that allows you to thrive. Uh, I talk about that process of how you can move from where you are to where you want to be and and offer some tools and techniques that help you do it as well. I I have to say that is awesome because so many times uh, people want to go from A to B, but they just don't know how. They, they don't have the tools. They don't have the resources. They have the gumption. They, they have the, the will. Um, but sometimes they need that, that gentle push or that nudge or for someone to say, it's here. Let me simply give it to you. And if you do these things, this will get you unstuck. So thank you for including those resources for that, that person. Now, for, for someone who says, you know, I've read it. I love it, and I am ready to start with some techniques. Is there any particular technique that someone, um, once they've learned it, that they should start with? I think I would say that one thing about this whole process is that it's simple to do, and it's simple not to do. It really involves uh, developing new habits in your life. And some of them are very, I mean, they're so subtle. They're definitely subtle. Um, it's often, it's, there's a, there's a difference between what I call the inner game and the outer game. The inner game involves things like, um, prayer and meditation, journaling. Um, and it's, it's one of those situations where you start with a very simple technique. You start to take in and appreciate any positive moments in your life. You journal about them. You do a gratitude exercise where you you think of 10 things in a given day that you are grateful for. And sometimes it's so hard. It's so hard to be grateful when you're really not very happy at that moment. And sometimes it's just, I'm just glad the sun is out today. Um, I saw my cat playing with a hairband and tossing it around the room. Um, those are moments of happiness that help to to build a new um, they call it neuroplasticity in your brain and it's it's they're pathways that are reinforced when you relive positive experiences and if they start to build new pathways that you, when you have positive experiences moments of joy and happiness 
And that's a good thing because we're kind of hardwired to to go to the negative first. And that negative is really sometimes very challenging to dig out of us. And so the, the other techniques that go with it have to do with uh, per changing our perception of things. If you find yourself saying negative things or thinking negative thoughts that you can mm -hmm. actually think of, you know, something that is um, that would be better, what you would prefer in your life, and and talk through what that would look like and what you would have mm -hmm. to do. And it helps to shift your energy in a more positive way. Um, you can develop really good habits like the ones I mentioned earlier where, you know, you're getting good sleep and you're eating and you're doing exercise and you're seeing nice people. Um, you can, again, gratitude and appreciation, uh, positive routines. I think sharing with others and being of service really, really helps pull you out of the doldrums. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Dreaming, dreaming and imagining is huge. Um, it's really... The process of becoming what doesn't exist yet in order to create a better reality. And that's like, it's funny because I was just listening to two different programs this, over the weekend that were talking about the world of the invisible. And that we, we do not even understand that the, the world that we see is not all there is. There's another whole world that we see through the eyes of our heart. And so part of our journey is to learn to see with our eyes in the heart. Um, and that's, a, you know, that's part of that dreaming where you emotionally are feeling so positive about what you'd like to create in the, for, in the future. Um, I think centering is big in that too. I think where you, centering is a, a prayer, prayerful practice of silence. It's not meditation, but it's, it's a moment in which you sit back and just rest in spirit and allow thoughts to go by your mind, but you don't react to them. You just observe them. And in that silence, every once in a while, you say a word like uh, peace or love, father or mother, you know, the, a, a, a word that means something to you. And that's to draw you back to this silent place rather than that crazy frenetic thinking when you spin off on a topic. And when you rest there, you get profound guidance that helps you move forward and can be very, very healing. Uh, I think also asking questions, again, affirmations or questions, making statements like affirmations are very helpful. Uh, asking things like, what one thing could I do today that will help me move forward and achieve what I make a difference, achieve some goal, uh, be happier, um, and then and then be prepared when you receive any kind of guidance, which you will when you're doing these kind of things on a daily basis, is that you be be prepared to actually act on what you've just been inspired to do. Um, you can also play about it. You know, you can play out as act as if something's going to happen. You know. What is it? We, when we were kids, we used to pretend the things were going to happen. And that's actually a wonderful exercise, to pretend that all is going to work out okay, that, that God is going to hold you by his hand and, and take you where he wants you to go in his great master plan. Um, I think you have... Uh, there, are, there are moments when you finally start to thrive and you feel a huge energy shift. And you suddenly, you're more resilient, you have a better sense of accomplishment, and you can see how far you've come. But when you first start, it's enough just to see the little baby steps. You don't have to have the final purpose in life that you're going to get. Just what do I need right now? And for Peter and I, that's my husband, we, um, our purpose was to just get a home over our head where we could be with our animals and, you know, our family. And to, and finally to move it from what was a rental. The next goal was to get our home, on a home of our own again. And those are the biggest purpose things that we needed to focus on just then. And as we move forward and began to see those happen, we could think of something even better. We were so blessed. I have to say, we would sit in our home and look out 
at the view of her, pro- you know, our porch. I think my husband said, we're so lucky. I said, no, 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 we're not lucky. We have been blessed. You know, this Absolutely. is God's work. Absolutely. This is Absolutely. God's work. We would never have been there if he had not had right. a hand with him. That is, I'm so sorry to have to catch you off, but we are out of time. But that is such a wonderful, a wonderful way to end the show, reminding everyone that with everything that we have, that we're not lucky, that we are truly blessed to have all that we have and to have the victory with all that we have gone through and the lessons and bits of wisdom that we can share with others. I love it. Susan, thank you so much for coming on the show today and not only sharing about your book, because your book is important, but about those life lessons that you learned along the way and, and helping to encourage someone else who may be going through something similar as well. Thank you again. Thank you. Be blessed. And listeners, thank you for tuning in. And as always, may the Lord continue to shine his face upon you. May you receive his grace and his mercy in all that you do. Until next time, everyone, be blessed in the Lord. Goodbye.